So we're finally here. Let me introduce my crypto portfolio. In this video, I'm gonna reveal what platform I've ended up using, how much I've invested, and which 20 cryptocurrencies I've ended up buying into, or you might refer to them as altcoins, I guess. It has happened a lot quicker than I originally thought, but I had the money, so why not? I never thought this journey might end up with me speaking to my bank's fraud team with them warning me that cryptocurrency could be a scam and I could lose all my money. I mean, for God's sake, I'm getting taught about cryptocurrency from somebody who wouldn't know the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Do you think they warn people about buying gold? You really couldn't make it up. This is the biggest change I've made to my investment strategy since starting investing three years ago, which have primarily evolved around investing in Vanguard and Vanguard only. If you want to know more about my understanding of cryptocurrency, alongside my bull and bear case, then feel free to pause the video right now and check out the video somewhere over my left shoulder called Why I've Changed My Mind, which revolves around the topic of cryptocurrency. Again, link should be somewhere here. But let me clarify something straight out of the gate though. Any money which I've invested into cryptocurrency is with the view that it will likely drop both in the short term or long term. I personally would not invest a significant percentage of my investment portfolio here. So the logical question is, why am I investing at all? I do think there's a small chance there could be significant upside. If blockchain technology can execute on the potential upside, it could and will ultimately disrupt existing businesses, which I'm actually currently invested into. Due to this, I would class my position as a hedge, a bit like a hedge in your portfolio if you were to buy bonds or gold. So how big is this hedge? My hedge is somewhere around three to 4% of my portfolio with the intention of holding at least 2%. If it does dip below 2%, then I'll rebalance the proposition by topping it up. This event would only really happen if cryptocurrency prices collapsed or my other investments significantly increased, or I guess a mixture of them both. In the event that the crypto portfolio significantly grew, then I'd be unlikely to trim back my position, as I feel that the potential within cryptocurrency would increase as its value increases, giving it less risk. A higher price to me would signify increased adoption, increased potential, and lower risk of failure. This three to four percent position comes out to roughly two thousand pounds. I say roughly as I received a sign-up bonus on one of the sites for eighteen pounds, and then due to transaction fees, this came down a little bit. So I ended up investing around one thousand nine hundred and eighty pounds, which I will show you as part of my portfolio update. But this has moved a little bit up, a little bit down in the last few days since I've been investing. But let's talk platforms. What a complete nightmare buying cryptocurrency is. I honestly believe adoption is significantly suppressed, which could mean two things. Prices are actually artificially low right now as demand has been suppressed as people struggle to get through the barriers to entry of actually investing into crypto. The second is that these barriers could actually prevent the technology from taking off completely. We do need mass adoption for this to work. So there definitely needs to be some work done in reducing these barriers. So I initially set out to find the crypto version of Vanguard. I could see that the Winklevoss brothers were failing to launch their own cryptocurrency, so I knew it was going to be a challenge, but I thought I'd actually found the answer pretty quickly. I found a company called Invictus Capital, who had a product called Crypto20. Basically, you could buy it like any ETF, and they would rebalance the top 20 cryptocurrencies by market cap for you every single week, making sure you had relevant exposure to how the market was looking at the time. This was all for the very reasonable annual fee of 0.5% per annum. Over double my Vanguard fee in fairness, but a lot lower than the other ones out there that were charging between 2-3% to per year, which is actually far too high for me. So, did I go for Crypto20 in the end by Invectus Capital? I didn't. I was literally going to transfer the money that day, but as I was looking into it, I could see that transferring money onto the site was going to have a fee of 4.5% to transfer good old sterling over to it. I could transfer euros over there for free, but when I checked my banking charges, they would charge me a 4% fee of sending something in euros overseas. I wasn't willing to pay £80 just to transfer money. Luckily, I had a friend who was about six months ahead of me in their crypto journey and recommended a crypto exchange which had some really great benefits called Crypto.com, which you might see online referred to as CDC for short. It wasn't my plan to manage a portfolio by myself, but after the letdown of the transfer fees, I knew the only cost-effective way was to manage my own index through a crypto exchange. There are other exchanges out there, like Coinbase, but their offering of cryptocurrencies is really, really narrow, which wasn't good enough for me. There's also others like Binance, which I think are great actually, but I did prefer the user interface and the benefits that came with Crypto.com, which included a way to make passive income from the coins that you'd bought, which I might talk about in another video. 
the solution wasn't as simple as I thought it might be with Crypto.com because they actually weren't accepting sterling at the time. So I hatched a plan to buy Bitcoin via Binance and then transfer the Bitcoin to Crypto.com. If you're interested in either Binance or Crypto.com, then I do have some affiliate links in the description below. The Binance link will give us both five US dollars if you deposit $50 within seven days of opening your account. But the offer does run out shortly on the 11th of March, so you only have a few days if you want to do it. For Crypto.com, it's as simple as signing up and passing the verification process and you get a free 25 US dollars of their cryptocurrency, which is Crypto.com coin. I only get 25 US dollars back if you receive one of the Metal Visa cards, which personally I'm going to do as I get 2% back on all my payments in crypto as a rebate as such on a prepaid card. So it's a bit of a no brainer. Anyway, it's up to you. It's free money. I'm not going to lie. It was a nerve wracking experience. My money did disappear for three days between my bank and Binance, which at the end of it was my bank's fault because they flagged it for a fraudulent transaction and then didn't tell me that the money was flagged. Once I cleared this up with my bank, there was a little bit of nervousness about sending my Bitcoin from Binance to Crypto.com. It is a little different how you spend money normally, but then on top of that, if you mistype a letter or don't copy and paste your wallet address correctly, you might send it to the wrong wallet and you have no recourse to getting your money back. But that's the penalties on a decentralized system, I guess. So as of Monday last week, I finally had my Bitcoin in Crypto.com. So what was I planning to do with it? Well, there were two concepts of Crypto20 that I really liked and which I wanted to replicate in my own portfolio. The first was that the maximum weighting for any crypto would be around 10%. Otherwise, it'd be massively dominated by Bitcoin. The second was that 20 coins was actually a really good number to give you really good exposure to the whole blockchain cryptocurrency area without actually opening yourselves up to too many volatile small coins. I wanted a Vanguard ETF5, as I do have with VWRL, where I only hold large and mid-cap companies. I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of each cryptocurrency, but I will give a brief explanation of their weighting with what their general purpose is. So in my top tier, I have five cryptocurrencies with each of a weighting around 10%. These five are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, and Binance Coin. So you'll know Bitcoin quite well, which is basically a virtual representation of gold. Ethereum and Cardano are both platforms for smart contracts. Polkadot is trying to be the connector of all cryptocurrencies. It basically is trying to bring a lot of independent blockchains together. And then Binance Coin is pretty straightforward. It's a currency used on the Binance exchange. The second tier, I have a further five coins with a 5% weighting on, which includes Chainlink, Litecoin, Stellar, Bitcoin Cash, and Uniswap. Chainlink wants to connect the real world to the blockchain world to make it viable for smart contracts to interact with external data. Litecoin is simply what everyone thinks Bitcoin actually is, and it's actually a cryptocurrency designed for actually payments from peer to peer, basically. Stellar is focusing on lower fees for large transactions between large companies across borders. Bitcoin Cash is actually a hard fork of Bitcoin, with the intention of making it more viable for payments. Basically, think about it as being a competitor to Litecoin. And Uniswap aims to solve liquidity issues within the crypto exchange markets. In my third tier, I have a further five coins with a weighting of 3% each. I have Dogecoin, Solana, Aave, Cosmos, and Theta. Dogecoin. It's basically purely a meme play. It's similar to Bitcoin in a lot of ways, but doesn't actually personally do much. I really didn't want to buy this because I didn't actually see the value in it, but my philosophy is that I cannot pick out winners, so I luckily talked myself out of it. It was actually originally created from forking away from Litecoin, so the technology is underpinned with peer-to-peer -peer payments. Solana is all about ensuring speed and scale of transactions. It's trying to improve on blockchain technology by removing these barriers. Aave is designed to support borrowing and lending of cryptocurrency. Cosmos is similar to Solana. It's looking to become the internet of blockchains. And Theta is looking to change the way that video sharing platforms work, a bit like YouTube. And then in my last tier, with five further coins with a 2% weighting, I've got EOS, VChain, Tezos, Crypto.com coin, and Synthetics. EOS is a platform designed to make it as easy as possible for developers to create decentralized apps, or dApps for short. It can be a complex process to learn how to do this, and it's got a very tall barrier to entry. VChain is a blockchain traceability solution, so think of supply chain management, basically. Tezos is a platform for smart contracts. They differ from other platforms, but they're actually run by their stakeholders, so anybody that holds their currency. So, I guess that's me. 
Crypto.com coin is similar to Binance coin. It's a currency that supports transactions with on its relevant platform, I guess, as well as serving as a reward mechanism for its site. And then finally, Synthetix is designed to facilitate buy and sell transactions with all known exchanges. Some of you who are more knowledgeable about cryptocurrency may have noticed that I've actually missed out some high cap coins which haven't included in this list. They include Ripple, Tron and Monaro. This was due to them not being available on Crypto.com. If they were to be added in the future, then I would adjust my portfolio and make sure they were included. As of right this second, my portfolio is worth £1,966, so it's dipped by 14 quid. But do forgive me if the numbers on the screen don't quite match up, as I'll edit the footage from my portfolio after I've done the recordings on here. It has swung throughout the week by about £80 either way, but it has been fairly consistent, or more consistent than I thought it'd be. Out of the £2,000 I've invested, roughly 20% of it is currently being staked. Without going into the ins and outs of what proof of work is and proof of stake is, I'm basically lending out my cryptocurrency to get a return to earn passive income. Right now, I'm getting a return of about 4.5% per annum on both Ethereum and Bitcoin, and I've locked them both away for three months, meaning that I can't take them out and sell them, which I don't mind because I wasn't planning on selling them anyway. You can only do this with certain cryptocurrencies. I would choose to do it with several others of my coins that it's possible to do with, but I actually don't have the minimum amount yet, and I'm not willing to buy up to those amounts, basically. With my returns on Bitcoin and Ethereum from staking them, I might top up my altcoins so I can stake them as well. So there you have it, my first instalment of crypto portfolio update. If there's anything you'd like to see or for me to talk about regarding cryptocurrency, then please let me know in the comments below. Again, if you're interested in creating a hedge position within cryptocurrency, then feel free to use my links in the description below, both for Binance and Crypto.com. You get 10% if you deposit $50 on Binance, and you get $25 free just by signing up on Crypto.com, but this offer does run out soon. I expect my first monthly update somewhere around the start of April and we'll see how my portfolio gets on I guess. If you have made it this far then a massive thank you for me. I do all the content on this channel such as regular updates on my main investment portfolio which is actually on Vanguard. But then I also do other bits of fun like attempting to prove that stock picking doesn't work by getting my dog to pick stocks so feel free to check that out on my channel. That's all for today, see you in the next one.